Ooh. Wow. This seems like a Namek plantation in the 1800s. Things seem to be getting sticky around here. But I've got no time to lose. I need to get back. I've been a worker in this nutmeg plantation for the past two years trying to earn a keep for my family. But lately, the trees have been dying because of a disease. And you know what? My bosses say they are selling this land for 25,000 Spanish dollars. Hey, what are you doing here? <sighs> trying to remove all these rotting terrible nutmegs from this plantation. What plantation? You're crazy. Huh? You know what? He's right. This is Tangling Village widely known to Singaporeans as a hipster enclave. But what few know is, Tangling's history actually traces all the way back to the 1800s. And I'm going to discover how this place has transformed over the past 200 years. As you saw, Tangling was first a nutmeg plantation known as Mount Harriet, co-owned by British Colonel Treasurer William W. Willens and local businessman Wampo Hu R.K. Their fortunes changed when a nutmeg disease swept through the entire plantation and they had to sell the land to the British forces who turned the plantation into a military barrack for their British soldiers. <laughs> World War II ravaged Singapore, and after three and a half years of war, the Japanese forces formally surrendered and returned the land to the British. The British forces then reoccupied Tangling Barracks and assigned it as the general headquarters of the Far East Land Forces. Tangling thus became a mix of British soldiers and Singaporeans who resided there and set up a community with lots of feasting, dinners and parties. After the British left, the need for national service became clear. With our small population of about 1.8 million, it would not have been possible to raise a force big enough to protect the country. Five years after the National Service Bill was passed, SF took over Tangling and housed various departments throughout the area, including the Central Manpower Base where 18-year-old boys starting their National Service reported to the military. Gentlemen, welcome to CMP. This might look like a classy art gallery today, but it used to be an enlistment centre for NS recruits like me in the 1970s where they had to ink all of their 10 fingers in order to get enlisted in the military for the very first time. At the time, many were questioning. Ah, why is there a need for national service? My mother always say, uh, good men don't become soldiers. Anyway, Singapore is already so small. How can we defend ourselves? Huh? But when we get into the 80s, the SAF started to improve on their public engagement efforts and people realised that the SAF is a capable force and is essential to the nation. And NS men began to be very proud of their uniform, just like me. Right, where are you from? <laughs> uh, a more modern era than you. This is where for two years I was in the army, national service, but I was in MDC. I learned how to dance, sing, act, be with famous people. How to become Najiwali. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no standby bit. No, 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 no. Standby makeup, they have standby, standby costume. So those are the discipline that they have been built in us. And those disciplines uh, stick to me until today. You must have a great time here. What does it mean to you, Najib? Actually, it's a defining moment for Najib mm -hmm. because when you were 17, 18, you don't know what to do. So when I got into MDC, I realised this is what I want to do. I want to perform. I remember one moment whereby we went to a camp and I was singing a song and I, and I saw the sparkle in the eyes of these kids. And right after the show, I stood up and said, OK, this is what I want to do. I want to realise my potential. And only through MDC, music drama company, that I, I got to have this sort of motivation. I was very happy to be the face of rest and relax. 
I think that's our contribution to the army because when you represent uh, a moment of joy, I think it's very important. So all this talking about dancing and singing and acting, I feel like dancing. Come, dance with me. Um, actually, I'm good. <laughs> dance? Okay, ready? Lights! Rivers belong where they can ramble Eagles belong where they can fly I've got to be where my spirits can run free Gotta find my corner of the sky What is this? Hi Ben, welcome. This is one of those many dance parties we used to organise at the officers' mess. Right. Tell me more about this officer's mess. Well, the mess is a very special place for me because I met my wife here. It's like a hostel for single officers. We used to have inter-mess games and parties every quarter. And I remember one particular occasion, she was selling uh, raffle tickets. She caught your eye. <laughs> yeah, the next day I called her department and I sort of invited her out for a date. Of course, she didn't say yes the first time. She had to play hard to get. So I had to call her another time and invited her out. And so we started dating. Was your wife the, your main motivation for you to stay on in, in the SAF? <laughs> well, I suppose you could say my wife was one of the main motivations. But there was also friendships. Sometimes you're out in the field for a few days. Really brings people together. It's those kind of friendships that mean a lot. You know, people who you meet when you're about in your 20s and now you're in your 50s. We are presently like attending each other's children's weddings, that kind of thing. So it's lifelong friendships that were formed. It's really special to me. Well, that was very inspiring. Thanks for sharing with us your experience, James. You're welcome. My pleasure. In 1989, Mindef headquarters moved out of Tangling to Bukit Kumbak and the Central Manpower Base to Depot Road so that Tangling Camp could be transformed into today's hipster paradise. And here with me is the man in charge of transforming many parts of this military barracks into the vibrant place it is today. This place has changed so much, it isn't like what it was before. So yeah. how exactly did you do it? This area in itself is you know, 150 years in history and we really wanted to preserve the old charm in it. Things like verandas need to be kept intact, standard doors and windows. We have a vision on hand, wanted to, to turn it into a hipster enclave. And one way we retain the old charm is to work with existing tenants and see how we can get new tenants to come in for a good mix. Collectively, this is what is you know, being known as the Dempsey Hill you know, is today. Speaking with Nicholas wraps up my journey in Tangling Well. The old world charm he has preserved lies not just in the architecture, but in the stories of people like James and Najib. They embody a spirit of kinship, courage and resilience sacrificing in the face of challenges to build a strong defence force for the nation. Much like Tangling's history, even though time changes things from the outward, the strong essence, ties and spirit stays the same. And that leaves a lasting legacy. Much like the biryani that I'm having now, 40 years on, it still stays this good.